Hey everyone, I'm really excited about this video. We're going to automate almost everything about fine tuning GPT 3.5 Turbo for function calling. Everything will be automatically generated for us, all, all the data classes, including examples for your particular case. All you'll have to do is just modify this prompt for your use case. And what we'll end up with is a function description, a function description along with a fine tuned model which we can use to query here in this case, this is fine tuned on company information. I'm just going to type in Uber. And as you see, I am getting back a function call. This was the streaming response. And here is the actual function call object. So all we had to do to fine tune this model with a, with a single click was to write this prompt right here. So this list was generated and then a fine tuned data set was generated based on that list. And then the fine tune happens See this file. This file just handles everything almost, except a few things in the end. So let's take a look. We are going to go over six files, okay, and run everything. That py file actually runs everything. Here are the steps are as numbered. Requirements for this is OpenAI and Llama Index. We will be using uh, Llama Index along the way to automate some of the processes. We will review all the files, but let's see what happens when we run everything, okay? When we run everything, we are importing step one class list generator, which will run this file. So this is a way of running files, actually. Anyway, I just thought this is just a quick way. When you import a file, it actually runs the file, unless you have that if main statement at the bottom, you may have seen it in some files. That statement actually stops it from running while being imported. Anyway, run everything.py just runs everything. I'm just going to click run. And we're first going to import the self step one class list generator and as you see this is actually making a call to gpt4 to generate the data classes automatically from our prompt i'll just let it go real quick it's also generating a list which is going which we are going to use to generate the fine-tuning data set and then now the next step is do you want to generate the fine-tuning data let's go ahead and delete our fine-tuning data and i'm just going to click enter and we are doing this process by parallelization We'll talk about that using third pool executor. So, so far we run this file and now we are actually running the second file. And there's some uh, interesting magic going on, which we'll talk about. See, now our data set is being generated in real time. As you see, it's being populated. The new examples are being added. So, this is, these are, if we go back all the way to the top. A user message, a system message, which responds with a function call and also a function description. So this is going to be our fine tuning data set, which is automatically generated. You can specify how many examples to generate. We're going to talk about that as well. Okay, our examples are generated. Our data set is generated. Now it's asking us do you, if you want to start fine tuning. All we have to do is just press enter. And it's going to start our fine tuning job. As you see, it has started. We can keep track of the uh, status of this uh, fine tuning process from Python, from our development environment, but we can also uh, check it right here in, the, in your playground. There's this new tab called fine tuning. You can actually load files and create new fine tunes from here too. So this is really cool. This is very new. So currently our files are being validated. After that, we uh, open and automatically pick 10 epoch for us because we only have 10 examples in our fine tuning data set. So you're going to be able to see metrics and all that. So once this starts, I'll just show you quickly what's happening. And then we'll talk about the code in detail. Code files for this project will be at my Patreon under AI architect level. Link will be in the description. I also, I have 130 plus projects there, which you'll have access to, plus some exclusive office hours, which you get a chance to talk with me and exclusive walkthrough videos, such as voice controlling auto AGI, which is an agent I wrote, which works really well voice control and GPT-4 agents. Like I said, there's quite a few. And if you were wondering what type of videos I have, or if you want to find which video, uh, the video that you're looking for, you can go to www.echohive.live and just simply browse through it, find the descriptions from all the YouTube videos I made, 200 of them, and uh, find the code download links. If you're a patron, and if you're searching for, let's say, Llama Index, all you have to do is just type in, it is a real-time search, Langchain, and here are all the Langchain videos I made related to Langchain. Our fine tuning is started. So this is going to take a minute while it's running. Let's go back to the code and let's begin. Our first file is the class list generator. So this uh, file makes a call to GPT-4 with a special um, system message, which uh, asks it to generate however many examples we have provided. Uh, sorry, it actually generates the data classes, which we're going to be using because that's how 
Llama index uh, operates. And we're going to generate the, we are also going to generate the list of examples that we want as well. Okay, this is uh, being done with streaming uh, function, uh, streaming responses. And then our prompt is here in this case, generate company profile using company description. Here it was founded, founder names, revenue, and other essential information based on the list item. Okay, so this is because we're going to create a list and uh, we're going to actually generate many examples, in this case, 10, right? based on this this schema in a way okay you can modify this for example i can run this file to ask for generate python question answer answer pairs based on okay so just as long as you keep this format you can change it to do whatever you like now we have this add code function which automatically adds the classes that are generated plus the list that is generated into this file programmatically that's why we have this comment right here classes and list under here and then we have end of classes and list and our prompt template is also inserted here. So let me show you. If I were to run this file alone by itself with our new prompt, generate Python question answer base, it's now creating a data, identity data classes based on our current prompt. And after it is done, and say now it's generating list items, it actually chose programming languages. If we come back here now, see this file has changed. Now the data classes have changed and the list have changed. Quickly taking a look at our fine tuning, as you see, it's converging, and our metrics are. We are currently at step forty-one. You can see your losses and stuff. So it's currently ongoing. Just wanted to mention, show you that. Let's try a different example. Generate cities to visit along with their touristic landmarks based on the list item. Okay, let's run this and see what's happening. It is writing our pedantic classes, landmark, city, and landmarks is going to be a list. It is generating list items. However, it shouldn't have mentioned landmarks, but I mean, this is GPT-4 returning. Sometimes it's not 100%, but if we go back to our uh, file, as you see our list and our data classes is populated. So we can now continue to fine tune with this actually. So, okay, continuing, we make a GPT call and let it generate examples for us, right? And the general data structure so far, okay? This is not the fine tuning data set yet. And then we, we use this add code function to look for the start marker and the add marker. And we actually add the content, the data classes in the list, okay? Plus the prompt template into that file, select this. So we, you don't have to modify this file continuously manually. This is our second step file, but instead you can actually just, you can do just run the first file and this, is, this changes automatically, okay? So essentially, after our imports, which we are using Llama index for, right, or your API key and whatnot, this part is inserted automatically by the first file. And then we are defining some Llama index stuff, the fine tuning handler and the callback manager. We are creating our LLM as GPT-4, okay? So to automate this process further, I've written this function. Okay, this is going to actually extract the class names and the list name. The reason why is that uh, we're going to have to feed the, our output class, which in this case, city, okay, I believe, and, and the list name to the llama index call here at the bottom. When we are calling the OpenAI Pydantic program, we have to put this output class and also the prompt template string. And when we are running our concurrent processing with Threadpool Executor, we also have to pass the list item. So we want to programmatically extract these. Why do we want to do that? Well, because our, this file is going to be dynamically changing, right? When you when you change the prompt in the first file, all of this stuff is going to change. So I tried to minimize the, all the, the necessary changes you have to make. So it's all automated. So what happens is that this, this just kind of goes over the file, this particular file and finds all the class names and it looks for the last one because it assumes the last one is going to be our output class, okay? If there's an issue with that, then this process is not going to work. But honestly, all the, the I've tried this 10 times or something. It never had an issue with it. And then we get the list, okay? And then we get the output class and the list name. We get the names, but when we get these names, they are string and we need to actually pass them to this function as an object. So that's why since we have the string names, we just look, at, look to them in the global workspace and get the actual objects. And when we're calling the OpenAI Pydantic program, which is from Llama Index, we just put the output class as the output class and the prompt template string as the prompt template string because that was populated automatically, dynamically from the first when we run the first file, right? You don't have to modify this here unless you absolutely want to. Everything here is generated automatically from the first file. 
So you can, you, all you have to do is just simply modify this prompt right here. After that, uh, I have the sequential call. If you want to generate the fine tuning data set sequentially, after, you can comment this in and comment the next one out, which is to do this in parallel to make it faster. We are using concurrent features thread pool executor. We have a function which we can pass into the thread pool executor. Number of threads is specified as five, which is the max workers. And then this just runs it and creates the fine tuning data set. You can just run this so you see. You can run each of these files separately too as long as they, they run in sequence, right? So this is running and it's going to use these examples and the Pydantic uh, classes to generate the data sets. See now uh, we are generating generate cities to visit along with their touristic landmarks based on Paris, Eiffel Tower, and is also mentioning here Lure uh, and some of the other stuff like the Notre Dame Cat Cathedral. So this is our uh, fine tuning data set being generated in real time, right? If we wanted more examples, all we had to do was just change how many examples. We can see that in action too. I'm kind of jumping around, but I think it's important to see how it all relates. So, so far we're in step two, right? Which is the data set generation step. This is our fine tuning data set. It's done. So if we were to actually, for example, say this 20 or 30, as a matter of fact, and we run this again, so it's going to do the same thing, right? Uh, following the landmark city example which we've given but the, the, the real difference will be at the end it's hopefully going to generate 30 examples this time see as you see it's continuing uh, and then when we run the second file the second file then is going to generate a fine-tuning data set which is consisting of 30 examples instead of 10. sometimes well i am trying to parse the response uh, like this and sometimes gpt4 responds in a weird way and it doesn't work if that happens just run this again or you can change the parsing logic as well. So I get a second time uh, the same error. So I just added return the response as a single code block in between. So I just specified it in the system message. So now actually it's doing better. Again, so but we run this th three times now and it works every time, except for the parsing, which has nothing to do with the logic, obviously, but you should be able to parse this one. Yep, there we go. And now if you go to the second file, this should have been populated by the, those examples along with our prompt template. There we go. So if you run this file again, it's going to generate data set, but this time with 30 examples. Okay, now let's move on to the third file. Okay, as you see, if you go to run everything, I am running it on the fine generating the fine-tuning data, right? First we import class list generator, which auto-populates the second file. And then we're running the third one, grab function definition. So here's the thing, right? If you look at the OpenAI's documentation and fine tuning in function calling, which is just added, they, they recommend format your examples as shown, like you normally would do for any fine tuning task, plus the function definition, right? And Llama index takes care of it for us from that data classes, okay? But we will absolutely need this to make the call, right? When we're actually using the fine tuning model. So. And I didn't want to use Llama index for that because it's just, I, I believe me. I mean, I, did, I just didn't want to use it. And I wanted to use it just regularly, right? I, like regular when I'm making a call to like GPT-4 or something like that. But then you need the function definition for that. And we need to somehow extract it from this. This Each one of these items, okay, has the function definition in it, see? So here I'm making another call to OpenAI, right? GPT-4 to uh, with this prompt to with a system message of similar uh, you know quality to actually return return that function to us in a readable python format and then i'm actually getting that and writing it to the functions.py file see just like this see this was from our previous example but if i run this again now uh, we will see that we'll extract a new function definition so we can use it in our uh, call making stage when we're making calls to this fine-tuned model so you can run these files separately like i said but run everything pi file takes care of it all for you including the fine-tuning step which is our next file we're going to take a look right after this okay so that that file ran the grab function def and it just wrote this the function definition okay so we can actually use this later right after we fine-tune our model you know just put this in your functions parameter. Why is it so detailed? Well, this is how Llama index generates it. Maybe this is a better way of doing it. Okay, so next we are looking at fine tuning. This part is automated too. We are using Llama index's OpenAI fine tune engine. We are fine tuning a GPT 3.5 Turbo model. But if you already have a fine tuned model, just replace this with that model's name and you can actually continue to iteratively fine tune it. Okay. And our dataset is going to be fine tuning dataset, which we've looked at. We are not using validation, 
and then that's it fine tune engine fine tune and then we just simply print right after that okay which we've done earlier and we look at, if you look at our example from before this one actually has succeeded in this file i have some commented out code at the bottom which is to which is a way to be able to use the llama index this is from their uh, documentation example i just left it there you can take a look i'm not using it i am actually using the use fine tune model okay yeah and interesting thing is that if your model is not so well fine tuned like with hundreds or thousands of examples you can actually use this i'm saying sorry i should have said since you have this function definition you can actually grab this right and actually just make regular calls to gpt4 with it okay i'm just going to change the model name to gpt4 okay and just replace this list with this new list which was generated for us we do have to change the function call name and we can run this it just asks us our idea you can change this to say whatever you like let's just ask for paris again see it's giving us um, a function return. Paris says landmarks, Eiffel Tower in a list format. This is an array, right? So you you know this is really wonderful. Louvre Museum, the cathedral. Yeah. Okay, it gave us three examples. Like I said, code files for this will be available at my Patreon at the AI architect level. I have over 130 really interesting projects here, like the Autogen, for example, which is an agent I built, which I'm really proud of. You, you can voice control it. Another project of voice controlling GPT-4 agents. Uh, I have videos on fine tuning, use how to use the instruct model. So I have 130 really interesting projects which you'll have access to and you'll be supporting me in my endeavors. This is what I do all day long. So I appreciate your support. Also, if you're interested in finding, I have over, I have actually 200 videos now. <laughs> I should update my website, but if you go to www.echohive.live, you can browse through all my videos, find the content that you're looking for easier. For example, here is Auto AGI, GPT Defender. I also have full stack web app videos, GPT for code battles. So there's all kinds of interesting stuff here. You can read their descriptions by clicking info and find the code download links if you're a patron. You can here also search for, like if you're looking for a link chain, for example, it is instant search. So yeah, it's, it really makes it convenient. It's www.echohive.live. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.